okay i might just adjust the um angle a little bit so let's do that i'm just going to move you in a little closer maybe some light a little more light don't don't want too much light it gives me a headache <laughs> hello everyone i can see already that we've got rich mitch lizzie bean stuart Marta, lily Niski Pisky, Alicia, Jimbo, Petra, Scott. I think that's everyone so far. Hello, good to see you all. Thank you all for joining me. This this is kind of exciting. I'm a little bit nervous as well, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah, just because it's been planned for a while, I guess. And we've got some amazing perfumes to talk about. So let me know if you have the samples that we're going to be talking about, if you got them from Perfume Playground or whether you already have some of them anyway. Uh, we're going to be talking about, where's my notes? Ooh. We are going to be talking about the three ladies, the white ladies. You've got Madeline, uh, Donne Aqua, Ac Dolce Aqua and Petra. And then we've also got Latessa, Hemingway, Love Kills and Lost Alice. They're the fragrances we're going to be talking about. Let me know if you have samples or bottles of any of those so that you will be smelling along, which will be so much fun. So quickly, let's just see what everyone is wearing. What's your fragrance of the night? Just as a little icebreaker, a little warmer up. Have you kept yourself clean for the smell along or have you got a little sneaky something going on? Let me know. I do have some Mask Milanos on my skin at the moment. I've got Dolce Aqua up here and I've got Lost Alice here and I think I've got La Tessa here. <laughs> so I'm still not keen on this angle and this lighting. Let's just up it a little more. There we go. Tone is here. Hey Claire. Hey everyone. Claire, you're looking very sun-kissed. Thank you. I'm more sun-snogged, sun-swamped. I might have had a bit too much. Joe's here. Hey Joe. I know Joe's playing along. Uh, John's here as well. He's got his samples. Jimbo got his samples, but you got yours from Lucky Scent, didn't you Jimbo? And Carty's here. She's wearing Lost Alice. Hey Carty. Jimbo's clean. Good boy. <laughs> I think testing fragrances is the best way is to have nothing on to interfere. But if you're wearing something, it's fine. And Alicia's clean. JC Russell's here. Hey, JC, wearing Calvin Klein for men. Scott's got Rose Arabia Tafy. John sprayed do your home parfum, which was bloody stupid. Well, it's quite a strong one, John. <laughs> um, but it's a lovely one. Love the wallpaper, says Marta. Thank you very much. Joe is clean, ready to douse myself in these beauties. Brilliant. Who's tried them and who has restrained? Restrained or refrained? I think it's refrained, isn't it? Um, I have been testing them all for a while so that I have opinions I can share and there are no rules whether you've tried them or not. There are no rules here. <laughs> you can do what you want. Uh, Lizzie got my strips and smellies on the ready. Nisky Pisky doesn't have the samples. Well, hopefully you can learn something. If, you, if you're sitting there and you don't have the samples to smell along with, then hopefully in the future you can get hold of the ones that sound interesting and you could always play this video back if you want because it's not only my opinion that you're going to get, you're going to get the everyone in the live chat. So you're going to see all the different dimensions and how people perceive these particular fragrances. Shelley's here. Love the short new hair. Shows off your lovely face. Well, thank you, Shelley. <laughs> I had to cut it short because I damaged it so badly during lockdown. It was ridiculous. Mia's here. Hey, Mia. Dawn by Scent. Hello. Scent of the Night. Vintage Black Label by Lomferic. I've not tried that. It sounds pretty nice. Uh, Jim's tried a few, not all of them. Mar Maria wore each, well, one, eight, one each day. Okay, so you've tried them all once uh, per day. <laughs> Lizzie Bean's tried one. <laughs> Are you going to tell us which one? 
Um, Alicia has, there's a couple she hasn't tried yet. John's been a very good boy, miss. It's been hard, but I've been good. Wayne's here. Can still smell Zeno from last night I woke up. Just for you, Claire. Well, for you and Carty. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Nice to see you. Um, Lizzie, thought I was going to hell. Hope I'm not the only one to cheat. It's not cheating. It's definitely not cheating. It's, it's whatever you want to do. Petra has tried Petra so far, not falling in love with it. Well, you've got to try your namesake, haven't you? Right, so many comments. I'm not going to be able to mention all the comments because I want to stay on track and not let this get too protracted. Um, and Perfume Playground is here. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Is that Charlotte or Anita uh, behind the screen there? Just so I can call you by your real name, if you don't mind. Uh, Lizzie Bean tried Madeline. Okay, well, I'm not going to ask you what you think of it till we get to that one. Um, John's, John's asking, is it Charlotte? <laughs> Tim's here. Hi, Claire in the house. Samples ready. Let us spray. Let us spray indeed. So let's just get going. Um, and I've got, I have got an order of service here, but it's not, it's not in any order in terms of, I haven't chosen to, have I? I might have kind of put my... No, I don't think there's really any order. So there's no order. We're going to start with... So have you got your boxes ready? Here's my box. Ta-da! <laughs> so we're going to start with Hemingway. Sorry about the noise. Just quickly open, open this up quick. Get the noise out of the way. So let's find Hemingway. Here we go. Right. Pop that over there. Hemingway, get your paper strips at the ready. And where am I here? And I like to hold the end with the writing and spray the other end. Then I remember which end's been sprayed. So Hemingway, there we go. Give it a minute, let the alcohol just dissipate for a moment. I'm going to read you the notes and the information I've got. So this is by perfumer Fanny Ball. It was made in 2018 and has notes of ginger, rhubarb, Haitian and Java vetiver, liver, cedar and patchouli. So this one to me is probably the most on the masculine leaning side. Let me know what you all think. Have a little whiff. And what are we actually picking up? For me, this actually, and this has only just come to my mind right now, is this reminds me of Creed Spice and Wood, which I've always said smells like it's got a vetiver in, but it's not a listed note. Um, but it is really giving me that vibe, that kind of dry, woody, almost like pencil shavings or chips, wood chips, dust, a bit of wood dust kind of thing, but quite smooth. I'm interested in what John says about this one. Now, I know he did review this one on his Instagram and it has got a note, which is, is his nemesis in it. I think it was this one you reviewed, wasn't it, John? Lizzie Bean says it's very fresh. Jimbo says definitely masculine, getting lots of cedar. Yeah, I think it smells cedar, cedary. Oh, there is cedar in here, yeah. <laughs> it definitely does smell cedary. Um, Driftwoody says Alicia. Yeah, I can see that as well, definitely. But there is something that makes it perfumey, not just pure woods. And of course, there's this rhubarb note. Now, I don't think the rhubarb's too obvious at first. And it's only when you let it settle a while, you get this really tart, tangy rhubarb. And then it almost goes a bit sweet. And it reminds me of those rhubarb and custard sweets, if anyone knows those, like hard-boiled candies as you say in America, they're sort of red on one side, yellow on the other, I think. Does anyone get that? You probably won't get that just yet. Um, John says smoky on me. It definitely feels like there's a bit of smoke and I think vetiver does come off smoky quite often anyway. Um, oh, he's not reviewed this one. Okay. Uh. Lizzie says, I like it. It's reminding me of powder and dust for some strange reason. 
maybe I don't know I can know I can, I, I can see what you mean like that like a there's a sort of facet in common with it but what that could be I don't know um, so we've got ginger and rhubarb as uh, your sort of fruity, zesty, um, uplifting notes. And I don't really pick up so much on the leather. And I definitely think it feels to me like it's a study in vetiver. I don't know what you all think. Um, Joe says, not that I know, but has a bit of a cannabis vibe. Yeah, I can totally see that as well. Karine's here. Hey, Karine. <laughs> uh, Perfume Playground says, we love those sweets. Yeah, they are nice, aren't they? Yeah, so if you wait, when we get back to that, if we'll, we'll revisit them all, uh, let's, yeah, we'll rotate and we'll go back and let them have time to settle. I think the rhubarb really comes through a bit later, but it doesn't hang around forever. So but it is a really nice note and that's why I picked this one because it, even though this isn't necessarily something I would choose to wear because it's perhaps just a bit too woody for me, I think it's really interesting and I, I really like what they've done here. I think it's, it's different and it's nice. It's all lovely and well blended. I'd like to smell this one on my fella actually. I don't know. Yeah, I know he did like this. He has tried this. Um, yes, so I might get him to wear this one. So that's Hemingway. Um, if anyone wants to say anything more on Hemingway for now, speak now. I'm going to have a quick look at your comments just to check. Um, so Tim says massive vetiver and ginger and woody too, not getting the rhubarb yet. Um, oh. I've scrolled too. I've scrolled too far. Hang on. Here we go. The only problem with the old, with the old comments. Uh, Joe says reminds me a touch of a girl and one. Habit Rouge, maybe. Um, oh, heritage. Heritage. Okay. Yeah. Powder and dust has a sort of paper note to it. Yeah, I think um, you could say that it, this is a little bit papery, isn't it? The, the dry sort of woody vetiver thing. Mask Fragrance Milano. Hello, I reckon all of you are smelling. This is the awesome vetiver, earthy and slightly leathery, woody, spicy, etc. Yes, definitely all of that. Yeah, There's, so the ginger gives it kind of like a warmth, doesn't it? Uh, Jim says it really is nice. Not for me exactly, but all of these are classy. Uh... Tim says, because the smelling strips are black, I found a white pencil to label them. Well, Tim, I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. That's going the extra mile. <laughs> and we've got uh, Tara in the house saying hi to everyone. And just quickly reading through your comments. Okay, if I miss anything, don't be afraid to repeat yourself. Just maybe at Smurfy Girly to make sure I see it. So shall we spray the next one? So Joe is getting some patchouli and earthy vibe. Yeah, there's definitely patchouli in there. And I think yeah, it's a very grounded fragrance overall, isn't it? You, there's nothing sort of really bright and zesty and fresh, even though the ginger, it's fresh in a way, but it's not, um, yeah, it's very grounded. Well, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it there. Um, uh, Perfume Playground says, we'll ask Mask Milano for some white blotters for you. Great idea. Um, okay, so um, Mask Milano was saying that the, it's the Java vetiver um, that gives it that sort of earthiness and the Haitian vetiver is cleaner. Right, shall we smell the next one? So we're going to go with the, so the ladies, the um, uh, Donna, uh, line you've got Petra is our next one which I will lean down here and grab okay so if you find your lady Petra give her a little spray and here we go 
So these samples I'm spraying for the first time because Perfume Playground sent me a whole load of samples already. So these are our doubles, just in case anyone's thinking, how does she know about these fragrances and they, they've never been sprayed? That's why, because like, this is my second sample. <laughs> just in case, just in case. Right, so Petra is by Cecile Sarokin, one of my favorite perfumers. Came out last year and you've got pink, pepper, yellow, mandarin, bergamot, sweet notes, jasmine sandback, fruity notes, Mor Moroccan rose, ambergris, patchouli, myrrh, incense, benzoin, and leather. So that's quite the list of notes. So um, Master Milano is saying, Petra is inspired by a 1970s song of the British songwriter Al Stewart, The Year of the Cat. Oh, I know that. The refrain goes like, she comes in incense and patchouli. Yeah, so this one, I remember thinking, this is kind of reminding me a little bit of, uh, first of all, I thought it was Miss Dior. Then I realized it's not, it's um, Coco Mademoiselle. Not that it's the same, but it feels like there's, there's some similar notes in there. But this one feels like it's got do get some amber um, amb ambroxin or something like ambroxin that kind of like um, mixes in with the sweet kind of a sharp fresh fruity floral notes what do we all think um, John says a creamy girl and esque lemony feel Joe says yes <laughs> uh, Rich's mind is blown by such a long note list <laughs> Marta says, slightly reminds me of Diamond by Fragonard. I've not tried that one. Uh, Lizzie gets a boiled sweet vibe. I can see, I can totally see that, but kind of like a, a fret, like a fresh one, like citrusy, isn't it? It's um, uh, fresh and sharp, which I think that's why it reminds me of Coco Mademoiselle. And Joe says the same, definitely Coco Mademoiselle, because that's kind of that um, sharper end of a fruity floral, isn't it? Jimbo says there's something very neroli or pettigrain, like slightly sharp, sour. Yeah. Um, Alicia says, have you tried this one on skin as it develops a lot on me? Yes, I have. Um, I have tried it on skin. It, it does have development, definitely. I can't quite remember how it goes now. Um, I have to be honest with you, it's, it's not my favourite. Um, and Lizzie Bean says the same, not my jam, unfortunately. I think for me, I do pick up on, I don't know if it's Ambroxin, Mask Milano, please correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's Ambergris or uh, one of those ambery woody notes that I don't generally get on with. And I, it's not overdosed, but it, I, my nose picks up on it to a point where I'm, I'm a bit oversensitive to something in here. But I do enjoy the, the fruity notes, the sort of fresh citrusy notes. Uh, Petra says, I get something sharp too, but not the zest. I think it's a pepper coming up the nose. Uh, Karine says, aldehydes. I don't think, I don't find it aldehydic at all. Um, aldehydes can be fizzy or they can create like a, a soft and smooth, almost soapy feel. I mean, I don't know, I haven't tried all different aldehydes and I've never tried aldehydes in isolation, but fragrances with aldehydes in, it doesn't smell, remind me of any of them, if that makes sense. Uh, Mask Milano, there is natural ambergris and also a more complex amber and resin accord. Yeah, I mean, it definitely has that kind of like dry resin, woody, woody type thing that mixes in with the fresh so it's almost like you've got a combination of moist and dry at the same time would would you all agree or is that just me let me know what you think tim said just tried these on skin yesterday uh, before the strips and just demonstrates how different they can be big floral shop going on in petra like a say lauder's private collection um john says there's a hint of metallic yeah i can see what you mean there yeah um, Lizzie said Hemingway was more up my street, very elegant. Okay, I need I need a drink. Just because my throat's dry, not that I need a drink, you know. Um, 
So that's Petra. Um, if you have any more to say on Petra, do let me know. Um, all of those notes together, what would I pick out? I'll just say that. I don't think I would necessarily pick out any um, specifics except to say that it feels like a white floral, a fruity floral and sort of dry and woodsy. Whereas, yeah, you've got yellow mandarin, bergamot. You can tell there's fresh citrusy notes, but it feels like everything's, it's quite, what, I hate people, people say well blended. Um, I don't want to say that, but sometimes you can't help it. It's just the way that everything's blended is, is one of those perfumes that I would struggle to necessarily pick out a lot of these notes, but I would totally agree. Fruity notes, 100%. Jasmine, 100%. Rose, now I know it's there. But generally speaking, it is a, a fruity floral with a dry, um, resiny, woodsy thing going through it at the same time. And uh, Mia says this does, it's quite punchy and it does transition. Um, okay, right, let's move on to, I need to keep these strips with their relevant samples, otherwise we're going to not be able to re-smell them, are we? So where did we put Hemingway? Oh, Hemingway's up here, right. Just getting my house in order. So the next one on the list is... Dolce Aqua. So this is the one I'm wearing up here. I have emptied a sample of this one. So, I mean, that tells you how much I like it already. Um, where's my notes? And uh, Dolce Aqua, I think it is, um, it's quite a light perfume. But I actually really enjoy the delicacy of it. So let's spray it. Let's, let's stop talking. Let's spray it. Dolce Aqua. And here we go. Right, just pop this in here. Right then, so Dolce Aqua, another 2020 release. So all these ladies came out together, the three ladies, they came out together last year. This one's by Te Delphine Thierry. And we have Lily of the Valley, C Notes. What, what is that? It looks like Lug. No, it's Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, Marjoram, Mimosa, Almond Blossom, Ylang Ylang, White Rose, Musk, Oak Moss, Saffron, Cedar, Benzoin. So another quite a long list of notes. And this one to me, what I get from it is a lovely soft, so the Almond Blossom. Now, one of my favorite perfumes in the world ever is the discontinued My Insolence, and that has an almond blossom note. And I get the same almond blossom in here that I get from that fragrance. So, oh, it's just, it's, rather than being like a full on sweet, thick marzipan, it's like a really soft, in the breeze, light almondy floral scent. Let's see what you're all saying. Flowery flowers, says Lizzie B. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, Barry's here. I can't see Barry's comment, but everyone's saying hello to Barry. Let's scroll up a little bit. Here he is. Hey, everyone, he says. Hey, Barry. Baz is in the house. Um, he says, what a wonderful bunch of people. Well, that includes you, Baza. Right then, lots of beans, says Tony. I don't think we're talking about the fragrance, I think we're talking about the group chat. Lots of, lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of beans, definitely. Um, and uh, Jimbo says he sprayed it on last evening and it lasted almost 24 hours. That's really amazing for something so light. Do we all agree it's quite a light, um, soft and delicate thing? Musk Milano says, Ivy is so elegant. I don't really know how to smell, how to understand what Ivy smells like. I know what it looks like growing up a house, <laughs> but I don't really know, because there's a Lolita Lempica, the original Lolita Lempica has an Ivy note, but I'm not sure how Ivy actually smells or how it's supposed to smell. Um, if um, Musk Milano want to elaborate, I would love that. Uh, uh, John says, nice, Jasmine, Lily. Yeah, so you've got Lily of the Valley. 
So I think you get a slightly green, you get a slightly green touch, but it's not too green. Sometimes Lily of the Valley to me can be a little too sharp and a little too green. And here it's so gentle. It's almost like Lily of the Valley has been tamed. It's almost like you've taken the scent of Lily of the Valley and you sprayed it onto some really soft, lovely white lace. It's just so delicate. And then of course, mixed in with that lovely almond blossom, which is, is it powdery? It's hard, it's hard to explain. Is it powdery? What do people think? Um, Joe says, not for me, but I definitely get the lily. Marta says it has the spirit of both number five and number nine here, elegant and peaceful. I don't really get that at all. I because I find those too sharp and harsh for my, for my nose. And I just find this really soft and fluffy. Um, yeah, and let me know, well, tell me what texture you get from it, what feeling do you get from it? Because I get a very peaceful feeling from it. Um, floral notes, almond blossom, saffron flower and mimosa. Okay, so it's a saffron flower because a saffron can be quite, spicy and leathery and I don't pick that up here so maybe that's why because you you've got saffron flower rather than the spice I'm assuming although is saffron the stems from a flower <laughs> I should really know this stuff by now at 43 um and you have um an aquatic note don't you let's see it was uh c notes you have c notes listed but this isn't that of let's say invictus as an example this is almost like a really a gentle breeze it's coming in maybe from the sea but you're not right there on the cliff edge getting a blast of wind in your face it's almost like you you're a bit more inland and you just catch a real subtle hint of the sea not so much the sea not seaweed but fresh sea air what do we what do we think of that do you do you agree do you disagree do you pick up on that i really like this one i think for me this is that perfect summer spring fragrance you smell clean it's delicate it's versatile i'd wear this every day wear it to the office not that I'm going to the office at the moment. Uh, what do we all think? Let me know. How much do you like it or not like it? Is it your thing? What are you picking up on? Um, it's making me sneeze for some reason, says Lizzie, but it's very pretty. Quite like this one, says Jim. Jim, did you, I can't remember. Did you ever get my insolence? Um... Is there prominent lily of the valley in this? If yes, I'm very interested, says Carti. It's not a typical lily of the valley type scent to me because oftentimes I don't enjoy those kind of fragrances and I really like this. So I would say it's there because people are picking up on it and, um, but it's, it's quite soft and it's really lovely. It's blended so nicely with that almond blossom and it, oh, it's sort of like gentle, soft, fluffiness about it. So it doesn't have that kind of sharpness that often comes with Lily of the Valley. Because these notes, if I read these notes and you said, do you want me to send you a sample of that? I'd say, oh, maybe don't bother, I doubt I'd like that because it's like Lily of the Valley and there's some saffron. So I generally don't like saffron. But this is so nice. So nice. What other notes do we have? So we've got Ylang Ylang, white rose, musk, definitely musky. It's got that lovely, soft, clean, fluffy muskiness. Cedar and benzoin. And I think they give it, so the benzoin gives it a little bit of sweetness, almost slightly vanillic without being vanilla. <laughs> um, Barry's explained what ivy can smell like to him. <laughs> um, Wayne says, okay, this sounds gorgeous, need to sniff. Uh, Lizzie says, a proper bunch of flowers, this one, all colours, mixed bunch. Uh, my my favourite so far, from the free, says John. Yeah, from the, the free we've smelt, uh, I agree, it's, it's my favourite. I really like this one. Um, 
Oh, Andreas is here. Where's your, oh, your comments just, just disappeared? I'm so sorry. I don't know if this angle is any good. I'm going to try and I keep looking. I'm sorry that I'm always looking down, but it's the only way I can see the comment. Um, here we go. Now, where's Andreas's comment gone? I'm looking for you, Andreas. Where are you? That's how I talk to sweetie. Where are you, sweetie? Um, how to describe ivy leaves, says uh, Mars Milano. Green, yet not aggressive. They add some kind of elegance to the opening. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Joseph's really changing now. Um, um, it's the kind of ask where someone is nuzzling your ear, says John Snow. Hmm. I don't know why I used your full name then, John. It's almost like you're in trouble. John Snow, get here now. Uh, Lizzie says there's definitely a fresh breeze about it, a mountain breeze over bluebells and daisies. Yes, that's a lovely description, but that's like that's perfect because it shows the the subtlety of it, the gentleness of it, and I think that's really what this fragrance is all about. Is this subtle, gentle, delicate, soft, fluffy? There's nothing harsh. Here here at all um mia says for this to me is beautiful day out in a floral field on a summer's day with a breeze yeah again yeah definitely it's it's lovely uh, i still can't find andreas's comment so i'm sorry about that um oh joe when i mention my uh, insolence i mean my insolence the uh the flank the 2012 limited edition which is my favorite and this i don't really get violet from that i get more musk vanilla and almond blossom and then there's a hint of i think it's a hint of orange blossom or jasmine like a touch of white floral but it's got this similar delicacy about it as well as that almond um i'm sure you know it because you are you're a ex are you ex galan used to be at galan didn't you um Karin says, hmm, I'm interested now. I'm intrigued now. Joe says, the greenness is gone and it reminds me of insolence. Uh, sounds like a floral silver mountain water, says Tony. Um, no, because I hate that. <laughs> it doesn't have that dry green, um, I think it's dehydromersinol is, is the uh, ingredient that causes that kind of like dry green thing that irritates me um but probably how other people experience floor, uh, silver mountain water you you're probably right but just to me um no <laughs> rich mitch says my insulin sounds too much like my insulin yeah okay right um lizzie bean's getting a hint of lilac um Joe says, I was with Galan when they launched both and this really gives me that vibe. Yeah, it's like um, just maybe like a slightly fresher, a lighter version, maybe. Um, Andreas, here he is. I'm here. I just said that Mars Milano always refined, classy and sophisticated, very Italian, effortless elegance. Yes, definitely. Okay, Lizzie's going to have to try it on skin. Yep. Sybil's here and Francis. Hello ladies, welcome aboard. Right then, let's move on to the next one. So we'll pop that one down for now. We'll come back to it. And the next one is Madeline, of course. And I have got that on skin here, but I've also, I'm not gonna take my sample out. I'm gonna show you now uh, the travel spray. So uh, Pl Perfume Playground, kind enough to send me the travel spray of this one. So Madeleine, if you want to get your Madeleine out or Madeleine. Um, so if you see there, that's the travel spray box. It's rather trendy looking lady there, French lady, of course. And I love these travel sprays. So this is like a frosted glass. It's, kind of, it's got a nice thickness to it. So it feels like it would hold up if you actually are traveling around with it. And I absolutely love this. So I've got the dry down on my skin here, but let's do a spray. 
So Madeline, this is the one, when these three ladies launched, this was the one I was most excited about. And this was the one that tended to get a lot more attention. And I think it was based on the notes because it, it was a gourmand and I think everyone was excited for it. And I don't think Mask Milano had done anything really gourmandy up to this point. So it did definitely grab my attention. And so I was so excited when I finally got to try it. So let's do the notes. I've got some more extensive notes on this one over here. Yes. So we've got whipped cream, chestnut, cumin, tuberose, cypress, geranium, milk, vanilla pod, tonka, and musk. So this one is by Fanny Ball and was also obviously launched at the same time as the other two ladies last year. This one's based on the, uh, the brand owner's experience at Cafe Angelina, which is a famous, well-known cafe in Paris. So, oh, yeah, let's see what you're all saying first. Um, Joe says, love this one. Karine says, I'm curious about this one. John is saying, coconut, burnt sugar. Joe says, doughy. Carty says, Madeline sounds yum. Mia says, chestnut. Andrea says, they perfected the genre of defensive gourmands. Interesting, yeah. Tim says, aha, Madeline, it's a walnut whip made by a top Belgian chocolatier. I totally can see that. Lizzie says, roasted caramel nuts and sugar. It's had me dreaming all sorts of things at night. <laughs> uh, Rich Mitch, yo, I remember when there was hassle with the hair. What did the hairdresser do to sort you out? Well, I had a lot chopped off um, yesterday. A lot. Um, perfume, perfume Playground, this one's so, so popular. I totally understand why. So do I. I'll be honest with you. When I first tried it, I didn't love it. I, mean, I liked it for sure, but it wasn't quite what I expected. And I think I expected it to be maybe a bit sweeter. And people had compared it to Zerzhov's Lira, which has some similar notes. So that's what I was expecting. And actually, this one has really grown on me to the point that I really love it now. I mean, you can see, you, you saw how much I'd use. So I used quite a lot there. Um, so let's see. Lizzie Bean says, it's so good. I don't normally go for nutty fragrances. This is amazing. Cumin is very well balanced, says Musk Milano. Yes, that was the one note that I was worried about in this because I don't like cumin. And the funny thing is, I've never picked it out except for the very first time I tried it. The very first time I tried it, I noticed there that it was there, but it wasn't overpowering at all. I just could tell there was a bit there. And ever since, I've never, ever noticed it, which is really strange. So if a lot of people, I remember a lot of people saying, well, what's the cumin like? How strong is the cumin? I think if you're afraid of cumin, you do not need to be afraid of this fragrance. It, um, Jimbo says, I usually detest cumin, but I can deal with this. Yeah. Um, Time to musk up is here. Hey, time to musk up. Nice tan. Thank you very much. I've been working very hard on that. John says, oh, yes, chestnut, like them posh dabs of steamed milk blobs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Lizzie says, I don't think it's like Lyra. That's more bready. To me, Lyra, I think Lyra's really quite different. You, it's got a really prominent blood orange in the opening, and then it's got caramel caramel vanilla in the dry down and it's quite a simple fragrance really very nice but quite simple this has so much it's got the, like like the nuttiness it's really musky it's got like this steamed milk and you can really the the whipped cream and slash milk I, I kind of put the two together are really prominent here and I think that could be a turn off for some people so if you don't enjoy anything milky or creamy you need to stay away because I think that that's a really prominent note, but I really enjoy it. Uh, and even in the warm weather, this works. So you, you keep it light, of course, just a couple of sprays, but it actually seems to have a bit of freshness. Does anyone else pick up on a little bit of freshness from it? Um, Mia says, I don't find it similar to Lyra. I enjoy both though. Yeah, I think if you like 
lira you'll probably like this but i wouldn't really compare it oh, my throat's getting dry ah marta says it could be a fragrance for a luxurious hair product some leave on oil yeah i mean that would be nice yeah i'd love my hair to smell like this but i see what you mean and I see what John, I think John said sort of coconutty, and I kind of can see that. Um, I find it similar to Black Phantom in the base, says Fosco. Hello, Fosco, by the way. Um, Hamdinger says, like Madeline Cake. I don't, I, I'm not sure if that's part of it. I know that they, they were inspired by a chestnut dessert in uh, the cafe called Angelina, is Angelina or Angelina's? Cafe Angelina. Uh, it's inspired by the ch a sort of chestnut dessert, which I've never tried, and I, how much I want to go to Paris right now. I mean, I've been wanting to go back to Paris for so long, and something, you know, something's getting in the way. Um, but now, when I go back to Paris, I'm going to Cafe Angelina, and I'm going to have one of these chestnut desserts, and I'm probably going to take Madeleine with me, and just go for full overload. So how do we like this one? It seems to be pretty popular with you all. Let me know if you're too shy to comment. You can do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Is there coffee, says John. I don't think, is it listed? It's not listed, but I think, um, oh, hang on, there's, I missed some. Uh, I feel like, so there's no listed note of, coffee or chocolate but I do I get coffee and chocolate from this in a very light way so um, I've made some notes here that I feel like it opens up with a little bit of a sharp fresh note like a kind of a, like a citrus accord but very understated and it's not listed then it's um, clean creamy fluffy and it makes me think of iris iris in perfumes even though that's also not a listed note but i get that kind of musky irisy thing which is i think part of the reason why i love it so much i get like a cocoa powder from it and in the air it is like a light and fluffy dessert um crafted by a top patisserie i've said up close it's like a denser cream so in the air so if you take your thing take your oil strip and waft it and in the air it's so light and fluffy and lovely. But then when you go right up close, do you get that dense cream? That's what I get. And a dusting of cocoa powder. And the feeling I get from this one is warm, cuddly, and very much sociable. Do we all get similar vibes? Or do you get something different? Jimbo says, someone mentioned burnt sugar, which I get a bit more than coffee. Yeah, I can see that. Alicia says, I think there is a little coffee. Maybe it's just a chestnut though. Oh, so good. Um, Elaine says, vlog when you go to the cafe, please. Oh, I will, I will. Lizzie Bean says, I'll get a bit of coffee. I mean, it's based on a cafe, so I'm sure there probably is a little hint of it. Sybil went to college in Paris for three years. I miss it so much. It would have been four years, but I went to New York for my junior year. Oh, how nice. Um, Tim says, yes, up close, dense in the air, lighter and fluffier, yeah. It's so nice, isn't it? Because you, you, people will catch a whiff of it and it will be very mysterious and intriguing and kind of like calling you in. And then if you go in for a hug, you're going to get that richer, sweeter kind of feel from it. So, so good. I really like that one. So that's Madeline. So I'll pop that one down here for now. And the next one is Love Kills. So if you want to find your Love Kills sample, where's mine? Here it is. Love kills. I'm really curious. Uh, we have a rose lover in the house. I'm sure we've probably got more than one rose lover, but one rose lover in particular. I'm really curious what she's going to make of this. So, love kills. I've sprayed. Here we go. And let me read you the notes. So, the perfume is Caroline Dumas. It came out in 2019. The notes are Turkish rose oil, African geranium, ambrette, patchouli, amrarome, <laughs> cedar and musk. I should have really looked up what the amrarome is. I might have done and then forgotten it. I'm not sure. Um, for me, well, I mean, this is like major, major rose 
big heavy rose hitting you in the face all the roses got together formed a club and then decided to knock your door and threaten to beat you up <laughs> and um, geranium is a to me geranium is quite a rosy floral so it's like rose maybe just a little on the sharper side right then Katty says very curious about love kills Tim says oh it's just I've just lost your comments um, Tim says basically it's very sexy it is a very sexy rose for sure John says, I read this was inspired by Bridget Nielsen. Uh, Andrea says, Lizzie, this one is for you. Yes. Um, Humdingers says, nice. Sounds nice. I love roses. It's a full on rose. It's a big rose. <laughs> Karine says, oh, oh, a rose one. Scott says, sounds like a beautiful one. Mars Milano says, the quintessential love tragedy, Romeo and Juliet, deserved a humongous rose, solid flora. And there we go. Jimbo says, it's a lovely rose. Unfortunately, Lizzie has got me interested in Mancara. Mancara. Okay. Uh, Lizzie says, very strong. There's a sickly edge to it. Is that geranium? I don't know. Um... I don't get anything sickly. Do you mean sweet, sweet sickly? Um, Alicia says geranium stops it being too jammy or sweet, like an evening rose. Marta says, I love this one. I did find it a bit challenging, but it's still very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, Marta says, geranium is used to sharpen the spiciness of the opening rose. Indeed. Okay, so so geranium should be bringing sort of like a sharp, sharp and a spiciness to it. For me, this is almost like um, the rose in a portrait of a lady, maybe. I think it's it's a rose solid floor, but there is a little bit more to it, especially when it dries down. But for, for now, the opening is very much like a full-on, voluptuous rose with just like a, yeah, just a little bit of a sharpness. Andrea says, geranium always has a minty feel to me. That's just me. Yeah. Well, you love your mint, don't you? Carter says, yeah, there is patch too, so I expect some portrait of a lady vibes. Yeah, it certainly isn't... Um, the same it doesn't have in portrait of a lady is, i'd say portrait of a lady has more patchouli i don't really get heavy patchouli here portrait of a lady has um some i i think there's some vanilla in there because it kind of goes a bit sweet and i also get a hint of like a tiny hint of a curry and it's really quite a dry fragrance whereas this to me isn't as dry as portrait of a lady Marta says, rose geranium are a common combo for good quality bath oils, so relaxing. Yeah, I think this feels a very romantic fragrance for sure, but maybe a bit more than just romantic, it, quite seductive in, in maybe a more out there way, like not, um, not a silent, I mean, it's called love kills, not a silent killer, <laughs> maybe someone a little bolder, shall we say. DK Albright's here, says, hello Claire, I've returned. Good to see you, DK. Lucy says, as much as I love Rose, it can give me a headache if too strong. I get that from Red Rose by Jo Malone. Okay, let us know what you think of this one. Is it too strong? And Jo says, this would definitely get you noticed. That's what I think, yeah, for sure. It's, it's a very bold rose. It's, it, there's no mistake in this one. Sometimes you can smell a fragrance that's got a prominent rose note, but you can't for some reason pick up on it because there's a few other things going on. This is an unmistakable rose right from the start. And it's, I think it's really nice. I like this one. So that is a Love Kills. And we're going to move on to the next one. Oh, I'm going to have a little swig, actually. Um, right, next one is, so I should tell you what the next one is, La Tessa. So, I've actually got that on my skin. Where is it? 
the La Tessa. So La Tessa I've also got in a travel size and you can see this is a different style. So this is the clear glass, has the melting clock on the front, which I love. I'm a big fan of Salvador Dali's work and melting clocks and all that kind of stuff. So La Tessa is an iris fragrance. Here we go. Absolutely love this so much. But let's give you the notes. So it came out in 2016. So this is the oldest one that we're going to be talking about. The perfume is Luca Maffe. Notes of champagne, bergamot, neroli, iris, oris root, ylang ylang, tuberose, leather, oak moss and sandalwood. I have got some more notes over here as well. So let's see what you're all saying. Lizzie says a little too dry and sharp for me, but it's, oh no, that was that, that was the rose one. It's a hell of a rose. Um, <laughs> John says this one is going on the knee. <laughs> Master Milano says in the opening there is rose oxide that is making the rose even more dewy, but in the dry down, it's very dry, almost like a paper rose. That's really interesting. So we've got a lot of different rose materials in the Love Kills. And... <laughs> And time to muscat says La Tassa is the best. <laughs> Lots of virus says John. This one sounds wow. Karine says, ooh, I'm in already. John says, Ruti Oris. Tim says, La Tessa, oh, wow, how fabulous. In my top three, and I have a full bottle I ordered direct from Milan before that. Love La Tessa says, Jimbo. Champagne note smells like yeast, says time to musk up. There's a sweetness like Coke, says John. Marta says this is hardcore iris for iris fans. Not my cup of tea, but we'll find its admirers. Joe says I get a whiskey feel to this one. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, but it's, yeah. Coca-Cola, not cocaine, says John. Sparkling iris root, says uh, Lizzie. Um, yeah, so... To me, so first of all, I tried this quite a long time ago. Uh, our friend, many of many of you know, Sue Sue Poo, she was in love with La Tessa, and she sent me a sample, and, and you know she was waxing lyrical about it. And then when I got hold of my sample, I felt like it was just too much iris. I kind of learned, or at that point in my life, I kind of learned that as much as I love iris as a note, I, I always needed to have some other things um, to balance or contrast to make it interesting for me to enjoy it. And then uh, fast forward a year or two and I try it again and I'm like, wow, absolutely head over heels for it now. Um, so I get, oh, I, I know why Lizzie's not keen. Did, no, did you say you're not keen, Lizzie? Or oh, um, that might have been Love Kills you were talking about. Sorry, I might be getting mixed up. I wouldn't expect Lizzie to love this because I, I think it goes in that sort of chalky direction. I, more dusty than chalky, but I wonder. Lizzie, let me know. Do you what, do you love it and do you find it chalky or or um, am I wrong? <laughs> um Lano says, La Tessa is the weight of your lover to come and visit you. You uncork a bottle of champagne, feel the champagne yeast hovering in the air and the nosegay of fresh flowers. You see, for me, it's more about, it's, it's all about the iris and it's kind of, it's like concrete dust and, and that's not, um, it's not an insult. I used to eat concrete when I was younger and I shouldn't really admit these stupid things to, to the public. But I, I, I had some strange cravings. I guess I must have been um, lacking in some nutrients because I used to scrape the concrete out of the wall into my hand and eat it. I also used to eat chalk. I think I've told some of you this before. And I, I still love the smell and the taste of things like chalk, concrete dust and talcum powder. And anything that reminds me of those things Maybe it is linked to my childhood memories, but this totally reminds me of all of that kind of thing, that, that mineral, but to me it's so edible. But this is the most irisy 
perfume I think I've ever tried and I absolutely love it and I think I love it because it's not it's not really going green oftentimes iris gets paired with green notes like the Chanel uh, is it Chanel 19 and like um, iris um, the Prada iris infusion iris and they just because they go green they, that kind of turns me off this doesn't really go green. Does anyone um, have any other comments? What about the florals? We've got um, tuberose and ylang ylang. Let's have a look at your comments. Right. Lizzie says it is chalky, but actually I love that champagne bubble on top. <laughs> Carty says, mmm, concrete. <laughs> Um, concrete craving love says Petra Joe says it's softened now more powdery and soft Elaine used to eat soap well I can't eat oh, that that's not very nice the chalk and concrete yummy soap not so much <laughs> but at least you probably had nice breath <laughs> I had grit and grit in my teeth I used to eat sand as well and crunch sand so I would have grit and sand in my teeth <laughs> Chalk is good for the tummy, says John. I'll have to remember that because uh, I could probably use some of that at the moment. So having some stomach problems. Carti used to eat tar. Here we go. So it's all coming out now. <laughs> Lizzie says, um, my, well, my sister used to eat chalk. Uh, Corinne's thirsty now. Tony says, Claire, you're like one of those tropical birds that eats from the clay banks to get the nutrients they need. Yeah, that must be what it was. And um, Liz said she would eat my chalks when I was drawing pictures. Yeah, I, I used to do that. I'd, I'd sneak them. If I was in the classroom, I'd try to be the last person out of the classroom so I could go and take a chalk from the chalkboard and bite into it. And one time I got a crayon instead of a chalk and it wasn't nice. Crayons are really not tasty. <laughs> And Mars Milana says, Iris is a shy, shy flower. The more we added other florals, the more it moved out of the spotlight. See, I find the iris in here is, is really the star. And sometimes I don't pick up on the tuberose or the lang. And I wanted to ask actually Mars Milano, is there a tiny bit of rose in there? Because I feel like there's this exotic... It's not straight away, you probably won't be picking up on it now if you're smelling it, but in the dry down, I pick up on a slightly, uh, like a um, Turkish Delight kind of powdery rose. Imagine a piece of Turkish Delight, rose flavoured with some soft uh, powdered sugar on top. I pick up on that, so I'd love Mars Milano to confirm it because... I thought that, and then I watched Thomas, Ouch 110, he talked about it in a, an older video, and he picked up, he said, I feel like there's some rose in here. So, um, and if any of you smelling it now, let me know if you pick it up, but I don't pick it up straight away, it's just a bit later on. Um, right, sorry, I'm trying to scroll. DK says I used to eat tart and little round pebbles. Oh my God, I mean, you can't digest pebbles. I don't even want to know. <laughs> oh dear, um, that must have really done your digestive tract quite a lot of, um, <laughs> quite a lot of trickery. <laughs> Did you eat all these weird things, Claire, while sniffing your doll's head? Oh yeah, and I had, um, you know, those erasers I'll say erasers if I say rubbers and the Americans I think are talking about condoms um, I had one of those erasers and it smelled you know it smelled a bit like doll's heads it smelled kind of like vanilla-y and and fruity oh so good but I didn't eat that and Lizzie says this is refreshing and cooling iris lots of brightness yeah definitely agree Sybil says, hello, Mask Milano, can't wait to try your frags. Niski Pisky says, I ate coffee, mate, by the spoonful. Oh, that must have, I can imagine that. Didn't it sort of dry up your whole mouth? <laughs> Smurf is a tropical bird, says Rich Mitch. Drawn by sense, did concrete help to cement new friendships? 
I think it just cemented um, gas gastro issues. <laughs> Uh, John loves the fizzy element. Petra, so, oh, hang on, we're leaving. I'm running out of. Uh, Joe says the whiskey vibe might have been the BSCO2 extract. Ah, yeah, maybe. Uh, Petra would chew on pencils, not really eat them, just chew, but you do kind of consume some too, yeah. Hillary's here, hey, Hills. She's, hey, y'all. Right, little scroll. Um, DK still bothered to this day with stomach issues. Yeah, I wonder if that's what my problem is. Uh, Karine wants to try this one too now. Oh, so good, Karine. So good. Raw potato was also good. Oh, Katty, that reminds me of something else I used to do. Mum and Dad used to buy big sacks of, of potatoes still covered in dry dirt. And I would rub my hands all over all the dirty potatoes so that they were dirty and then I'd lick the dirt off. So I'm guessing I was lacking in minerals. Everything was mineral, everything was minerals that I was eating that I shouldn't be eating. And it's a, no one, <laughs> it's a wonder I didn't get worms. I mean, it, the thought of it now is shocking, but it's still kind of, I'm still salivating a little bit. I, I, if I could have sort of clean, clean dirt that's definitely got no germs, I would probably still eat it. But I don't know, that's maybe not the best idea. Um, DK says, I used to stick pencils in outlets in school. Got in a lot of trouble, wonder why. Um, <laughs> Carty says, young Claire was a proper gourmet lover, yes. Mas Milano said, we just added the usual triptych of Ylang tuberose sandalwood that you are allowed to use with iris, but no other florals. Okay, it's interesting. I definitely pick up on a, on a rosy note, and uh, as did Thomas. So it must be coming from those florals. Petra says there's B12 in dirt. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I, I needed some of that at the time. <laughs> John says soil is quite nice. I'd suck it off the end of grass. <laughs> it's all coming out now. <laughs> Tim says, love that I got an email from Perfume, Par Perfume Playground to say you can redeem the cost of a full bottle if you bought your sample set. Great policy. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? So um, for those of you that bought the sample set, you can buy a full bottle of any of the Mask Milanos and then that includes a smaller 30 mils or you get a discount on the travel sizes as well. So I think it's 10% off of the travel sizes. Travel sizes are brilliant. They're such a great solution for us people that have too many perfumes so I, lo I love them and I think they're really um, they're very attractive and I think sometimes you we care don't we um, a little bit that they look when they're on you can display them and they look nice so you're more inclined to use them rather than random decants that people have decanted for you with handwritten labels they tend to not get the love whereas a really nice thing like that that gets the love, so I really like that. Um, okay, Sybil says, I think your young body was wise to eat chalk. There's uh, elements in there. <laughs> wise to eat dirt. Um, Elaine says, very impressed with Perfume Playground customer service, the type of company I'm happy to take my money. Yeah, they're lovely. They're really lovely ladies. Uh, well, the, the two ladies that I've spoken to, um, very nice, very passionate about fragrance. And that's what you want, not uh, not just there for a business. They definitely love perfume. So that's what we want in Fragland. Okay, I think, we ne I think we've got one, we got one more. Um, yes, the last one then, Lost Alice. Who is excited to try Lost Alice? who has already sneaked to try. Uh, here's my thing. So I have got, I'm gonna show you the bottle. So here is a 30 ml bottle. This is what it looks like. I love this. The detail on these bottles is amazing. So um, you've got 
this little uh, bottle that's got smell me on it and on the lid it's got the act number you've got the perfumer embossed around here lovely heavy glass you can see how heavy it is and even the spray around there has got a mask milano absolutely love it i've got it on here already but i'm gonna I'll tell you what we'll leave the dry down there and we'll spray the other end with the fresh sprayers are really good as well they're, i think they're pressurized so you can, can control it if you want you can hold your finger on longer and do it a long spray love that so and then i've also got this on the skin here so this one really surprised me let's have a look at the notes lost alice the perfume is mackenzie riley this one is the most recent ones i think it came, it came out this year didn't it yeah i think it was yeah this one has ambrette which is a musky type note black pepper bergamot clary sage black tea carrot oris white rose milk sandalwood and broom broom is a sweet yellow floral that gives honey and pollen like aspects to it so what are we all thinking on first spray let me scroll up a little bit um alice hart says carty tony says i now want madeline added to the list Oh, they're 35 mils. Sorry, I think they're 35 mils, not 30. So correct. Thank you for correcting that, Cutty. Karine says, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts on this one too. Jim says, already tried Lost Alice many times because I intend to buy a bottle of this in the near future. Tara says, hope to try Lost Alice soon. Sounds like something I will really enjoy. Cutty says, I'm not a lover of gourmand, but Lost Alice has converted me. Lizzie says, warm, fruity iris. Totally agree with that totally agree i get orangey orangey feel from it so there's bergamot bergamot can sometimes go lemony sometimes it can go slightly orangey but i think because there's carrot in here i almost feel like the maybe the bergamot and the carrot have got together <laughs> and formed an orangey sort of hint let me know if you agree let me know if you disagree um definitely really musky musky warm iris um john says okay i was wrong i didn't think i'd like this at all i get coconut yes i got coconut from it as well uh he gets coconut cream cheese icing i can totally see that it feels like coconutty not mega sweet so what i was surprised at with with lost alice is i thought it was going to be a lot sweeter so I think that if you're like a full-on gourmand lover and you like really, really sweet stuff, you might find this one not sweet enough. If you're someone who doesn't normally like gourmands, there's still a chance that you'll like this because it's not that sweet, really. I think it sweetens up a little bit over time because you do start to get more of the, the picnic feel, the, you know, the carrot cake, the... I don't know about tea. Um, there is a black tea note. I'm no tea expert. I don't drink tea. <laughs> I hate tea. And sometimes tea in fragrances makes me hate the fragrance, but that doesn't happen here. So um, let me know, um, tea experts, let me know what you think of the tea note in here. Um, John says, wow, it does smell like cake. Tim says, can we also say Mask Milano have the best atomizers in the world? We can say that. They're definitely really good. I love, I love that. I love when you can, you can do that. So nice. Uh, Carty says, the opening is super charming. Joe says, first minty, now orangey. Um, Mask Milano says, no cannabis, but trippy and addictive. And Joya says, this was love at first sniff. I love the story it tells. Broom is not the nicest note on its own, very animalic, but it adds a contrast to the gourmand notes and makes a professional gourmand. Yeah, um, it still feels orangey, musky, warm. It's almost like it's a sister to Madeleine to me, and they're different perfumers, and they're different, you know, different lines from Mask Milano. 
but it feels like they could sit beside each other in the same group. Um, although to me, Los Alice is not quite as sweet as Madeleine and it's certainly not quite as creamy, although I do get creamy milky elements from it. Um, Lizzie gets a bit of carrot cake spices. Yeah, getting an orange hue. And um, Alicia says, I agree with the carrot cake comment with a slightly lemon frosting. Andrea said it's so addictive. Carty says there's so much to experience with this one with each wear. Yeah, I still need to get to know this one. As I say, when I first smelled it, I, I was surprised. I really thought it was going to be sweeter. And I think I, I was initially disappointed because it wasn't as sweet as I was hoping. But the more I've tried it, the more it's grown on me. And I've realised it's, it's quite complex and it does sweeten up. And I love the muskiness, the sort of musky, irisy feel to it. It's a fun fragrance. I feel like I would wear this in the cooler weather, whereas I could definitely wear Madeline. I wore Madeline, or just on one wrist, but I wore Madeline today. In And it's really hot here at the moment. Well, for us, it's, it's hot for the UK. Um, whereas this is, um, I wouldn't say it's cloying, which is an overused word for anything that feels a bit too much, I think. Um, but I do think, because it's got quite a, um, what's the word, there's a texture, like, you know, like peach skin, fuzzy, it's got quite a thick, fuzzy and musky feel to it, like a peach skin texture, that might just feel a little too much in the hot weather. So this hasn't had as much wearing as La Tessa and uh, Dolce Aqua and um, Madeleine because it's so hot at the moment. This is gonna be amazing, I think, when it starts to cool down, end of August, into September. It's got that really cozy feel. Um, just having a look at your comments. Right. Carty, I do get a lot of milk in this, which I love. Joe, definitely a storyteller, switching back and forth with every second. It's really interesting, isn't it? Um, Karine's going to make some ginger tea. Tim, I have smoked broom flowers back in the day. Oh, <laughs> oh you have actually smoked them, like, I see. Um, and you wouldn't advise this. Okay, uh, so we're back on to... Um, strange things we have consumed but now we've gone on to what we smoke um what did what did me and my brother do banana skins <laughs> um my my brother would have been maybe 15 so i would have been about 13 or so, that sort of age and he'd learned that if you um cook banana skins i think you like you you burn them in the oven and then you you use them in a cigarette. So you make up a spliff, but with instead of cannabis, you, we've burnt banana skins, and it's supposed to have some kind of effect on you, hallucinogenic or or whatever you get high. And um, I yeah, I, I mean I I did try it, but I, it wasn't good. I don't think we got high. I think we probably just felt a bit sick. <laughs> um, Carty says, I imagine Alice is great for cooler weather, but I'm going to wear the hell out of it this summer. Good for you, girl. <laughs> um, Mars Milano says, think about a very British high tea with cakes and scones and everything. There's a sticky rider cord that was meant to be addictive. Uh, sticky, is that sticky rice? Um, it's definitely addictive. But it's not too it's not too heavy and it, it's not as sweet as you might expect despite finding all of those aspects in there it's it's a really interesting one it'd be quite difficult to actually try and review this one i think hard to explain it's almost a slightly savory and maybe that's the black tea there's this slightly savory 
not earthy, but brown. I'm, I'm seeing brown and I sound like a medium now. Uh, a slightly savoury brown accord. I wouldn't call it earthy, but going in that direction. Ground is grounding. So maybe that's the tea. Um, John says, we tried to smoke dried herbs, parsley, coriander, basil, marjoram. When we ran out of back here, it didn't work. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, Tony, it's confession night. He says, it's all coming out tonight. If anyone else wants to admit to anything, obviously don't, get your, don't, don't admit to anything illegal, just in case your colleagues or employer are watching. But um, if you used to eat something weird or smoke something weird, go for it. Just get it. Just get it out. You'll probably feel better for it. Wayne says, is that when you decided eating concrete was a good idea, Claire, after smoking the banana? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, do you know what? I think that was it. Yeah, and that's what happened. <laughs> Yara, preheats oven. Hello, Yara. <laughs> uh, Marta says, this is a fragrance. It could be someone's signature, not just a scent. Yeah, this is on. Yeah, you're right. I think because it's got that kind of like warm, musky, cozy feel, that fluffy, warm, cozy but it's, it's still gentle, isn't it? It's not heavy. There's no sticky out notes. There's no jarring notes here. Again, it's all lovely and smooth and cozy and kind of calming, I guess. Oh, Gail's here. Hey, Gail. Can't wait for my sense of smell to come back, Claire. Oh, gosh. I hope you're okay, Gail. Um, yeah, I hope it comes back soon. That's terrible for a fragrance lover oh my throat is so dry okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the beginning and um revisit them so we'll start back we'll go back to Hemingway how are we doing for time I've done 77 minutes I don't want it to go on too long because I want it to be watch backable for anyone that couldn't make it so we're going to go back to Hemingway if anyone has um, any other Mask Milanos they want to talk about, I've got a, a bunch of samples here. I don't think I've got every single one, but I've got a fair few. So I'm happy if you want to, we can talk about those as well. Um, so Hemingway now, I do feel like I get more of the rhubarb and that lovely dry, calm vetiver. And it does really remind me of Creed Spice and Wood and that is no insult because Creed Spice and Wood to me is the best Creed and I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Creed but Creed Spice and Wood is elevated and I mean it is it's so expensive it's ridiculous but it is very good um, and this reminds me of that I really like that I don't really I don't get a lot of changes from this one but I think it's really classy super super classy what do we all think then final thoughts on Hemingway let me know. Is it your favourite? Is it your least favourite? Somewhere in the middle. Um, Mas Milano says, gosh, now I get the title of Chris Rea's God's Great Banana Skin. I never realised. Oh, I didn't know that either. Um, Joe says, this one I love. Are we talking about Hemingway, Joe? Yes, I love it. She says, um, Hemingway's really lovely, really enjoy it, says Lizzie. Um, Tony says, love the stream, feels like the old days. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, it's been really nice. I haven't been too well. I've had a lot going on lately, so I haven't done much in terms of, well, anything. Um, but I've like really prepped myself for this so that I'm on the best form I can be. I'll try and do more stuff and have more streams um, as I kind of get myself into a bit more of an even keel. So Hemingway is, I think it seems to be getting a general thumbs up. Um, for me, I like it. I'd like to smell this on my man more so than I'd want to wear it myself. Well, I could happily wear it. I wouldn't be uncomfortable, but it's maybe just lacking some sweetness for my taste or some floral elements, which I tend to wear. So uh, Marta says, I'm happy we had a chance to go through these fragrances and give, give each of them enough attention. They all deserve it. Absolutely, Marta. Um, my least favourite, I think, says John. Okay, interesting. Um, 
Lily says, from what I caught, I should try Hemingway and Latessa. Gail says, I love Hemingway, love the rhubarb and vetiver. Great in hot weather. Yeah, I totally can see that. And yeah, I, I really love that rhubarb, how it, um, how it goes like the sweets to me. It kind of does take on a slightly, um, uh, not syrupy, but like a hard boiled sweet. And I really enjoy that. Um, and let's go then to Petra. Yeah, this is this for me is my least favourite. It's just that dry, must be that ambery, dry, woody accord that Master Milano mentioned. Um, I and I love Cecile Zarokia and I love her fragrances, but this is just not for me. Um, it's if it wasn't for that dry note in there i would enjoy this I, I like everything else about it but unfortunately that takes over for me so it's a nice um it's a really nice fruity floral grown up fruity floral i would say but just that dry kind of like woody resin thing that just takes over a bit and lizzie says not a fan of petra unfortunately uh carty says love kills latessa and petra interest me the most out of all of them uh, Marta says you'd appreciate it in minus 20 degrees. Wow. <laughs> I don't ever want to be in minus 20 degrees. Thank you very much. John says I totally get Coco Mademoiselle vibe to it now. My third favourite, I think. I think. Um, right, okay, let's keep on moving on. Next up is Dolce Aqua. Love this. This is, is it my third favourite? Um, I think it's my third favourite, but it's maybe, I think my second and third are pretty much joint in how much I like them. Um, so this one is a massive thumbs up for me. And I just like the simplicity of it, the delicacy of it, softness. Yet it's not too, it's not too, it's got sweetness, it's not too sweet. It's like this perfect kind of cooling, yet soft and fluffy delicate floral musky floral with that hint of almond blossom just lovely so good um Carti says i have samples of russian tea monte cristo and reflection so nothing overlapped and all the new milano fragranze ones um john says my favorite this one lizzie says this is my fourth favorite joe says i need to try mandala uh, Lizzie's going to try Tango. I've got Tango here, so if I move quickly, we can move on to some of these ones uh, that Carti and Lizzie are talking about. So, um, yeah, let me know what you all think of Dolce Aqua. Have you discovered anything new? Trying it again. Then we have Madeleine. So, next one, Madeleine. Ah, oh, Madeleine. I just love. Oh, what do I love? I love. I love how Madeline retains a, a freshness to it the whole way through, yet a sweetness, yet it still works. So you've got this lovely creamy whipped cream note and this nuttiness, but it's all really smooth and it's fluffy and it's musky and it feels a bit irisy, even though there's no iris listed. I love Madeline, so I think I, think I might love Madeline. Madeline's a bit more punchy than Dolce Aqua. A bit more noticeable on skin it kind of like kicks off more um so i maybe i would put madeline as my second favorite and dolce aqua as my third and this says madeline is like a guilty treat totally wear it only for me to sniff i want to wear it so everyone can sniff it so <laughs> i think people would like it um mind you it might be a bit weird to some people it's quite it's really creamy isn't it it's not everyone's going to love that creamy no. Um, Tim says serious old school vibes coming from Dolce Aqua. Um, Andrea says Russian tea is my favourite. I cannot say no to a smoky dark mint. You can't say no to any mint, Andreas. Okay, so Madeline then. And next one is Love Kills. Shall we revisit Love Kills? Still so rosy definitely has a sharpness to it and it's yeah it's kind of drier now um so it's probably my fourth favorite i think 
yeah I like it it's, it's a bold fragrance I, I probably wouldn't buy this one I'll definitely buy my top three without a shadow of a doubt but I'd love like yeah I already have a, an amazing rose solid floor which is kind of my, a bit more ambery a little bit sweeter which is the rose from Ellie Saab essence number one and I think I prefer that more it's a bit more rounded and smooth this is a touch on the sharp side but I think it's an amazing bold rose seduction fragrance and jo John says it's my second least favorite <laughs> Um, Gail says Petra is my favourite then La Tessa and Love Kills can't wait to try out Lost Alice mm. right so then we have La Tessa here yeah that's my favourite absolutely love La Tessa I love that it does remind me of Concrete Dust and I, I love it I make no apologies. I love it for how much iris is in is in here, and I and I think um, uh, Lissy says uh, though it's gotten sweeter. I think are you talking about love kills there? Um, La Tessa needs to be on skin to be fully appreciated. Where did I put it? I can't. I've smelt too much. There it is. Because it, I think iris-dominant iris fragrances and musk-dominant fragrances must go on skin. The skin just kind of like pushes them out and rounds them out. And Although on, still on the paper, it's gorgeous. I love it. But it's definitely dusty. But I love that. Um, Got to go shower and let the dogs out. Have a great night, everyone. Great to see the crowd here. Great stream, Claire. A couple really intrigued me. Thank you, Tony. Have a good night. Andreas, not a fan of Love Kills. I thought that Lizzie would like it. And Liz says it, Love Kills has gotten sweeter. Wayne says Rose is the only Ellie sub I've not tried. I can't find it anywhere. It's tough to find. You have to keep, keep a search uh, on eBay and just uh, keep checking. It took me a while, but I got there. <laughs> Andreas says Latessa is a marvel of an iris fragrance. Every facet of iris in one fragrance. Definitely, yeah. Slightly earthy, slightly sweet, slightly powdery. I don't really get lipstick so much as a powder, like a, a lovely makeup, a really expensive makeup powder. Um, Lizzie says, Latessa is my fifth favourite, really nice. Petra, also need to go have a great rest of the night, everyone. Bye, Petra, thanks for joining in. Tim says, um, based on my bottle, the fizzy cola note wasn't for me. Let's hear it for La Tessa. It's a classic worth every penny. Love the smell along Claire. Superb and such fun. Thank you, Tim. So that's La Tessa. So that is my favourite. So um, in order then, favourite is La Tessa. Second favourite, I think, is Madeline. Then Dolce Aqua. Then Lost Alice. <laughs> Running out of fingers. Um... And then I've forgotten what else. Love, then it would be Love Kills, Hemingway, Petra. That's my favourites. Hey Amanda. Hi there, Latessa is gorgeous. Definitely must go on skin. I fell for it after wearing it properly. It's amazing. It's an iris lover's dream. Oh, I've lost my chat. So, a um, couple of you had some other mask milanos you're talking about so we'll end the um the chat on the seven fragrances that came in the perfume playground box so that's them we won't revisit them now because we're running out of time don't forget if you did buy the sample set you can use your uh what you paid for your sample set against the full bottle from mask milano you also get a discount on the travel sizes so if you do fall in love with one of them be sure to take advantage of your discount and uh, let's just experiment with some other ones now. Um, who, what ones were we talking about? Remind me. Um, someone said mandala. Did you say mandala? Someone mentioned, okay, we'll do Russian tea because uh, Andreas mentioned Russian tea. So I'm just going to spray it into the card. Uh, this is one I know I don't like. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Andreas. Oh, I do get the mintiness, but the thing is, I also get the, um, I think it must be the tea. 
yeah um it's that smoky almost barbecue smoke you know um so it's never record incense birchwood cistus labdanum they're the base notes you've got black tea magnolia everlasting flower which will be immortelle and mint black pepper and raspberry on top yeah i think it's because it's a tea fragrance and i'm just not a tea fan it's quite smoky um yeah it's minty but it does it just gives me a little bit of a barbecue vibe which i just i just don't like so that's um russian tea um what else were we gonna talk about what have we got here should we just quickly go through some of these so i've got reflection now i know how i feel about this i've tried it a few times it didn't make it into the seven um and i will tell you why so we've got notes of uh, mandarin essence, sparkling aldehydes, cardamom, pure jungle essence, mimosa absolute, violet leaves absolute, solar rays accord, beeswax absolute, cedarwood essence and musk accord. Now I love the opening of this. This bright fresh mixture of, of citrus and cardamom is so refreshing, so bright, so lovely. But I think for me, it kind of, when it dries down, it falls just a tiny bit flat. It feels a little bit like a, just a, kind of like a dry cedar wood, maybe a bit of iso -E super, I'm not sure. Um, but the opening is, the opening's kind of, I think the opening might even be a bit minty. Uh, Andreas, have you tried Reflection? Perfume Playground says we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Massive thank you. Thank you very much, Perfume Playground. I have thoroughly enjoyed it too. It's been brilliant. Yeah, I, I really like the opening of Reflection, but for me, the dry down just wasn't quite there. Master Milano says, thank you for this live. Very informative. Pleasure to follow. Thank you for joining in. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. And quite nerve-wracking too. <laughs> um... Carter says the opening is great. Yeah, there's a lovely sweetness to it as well. <laughs> Jim says, I don't use the word hate often, but I really hate reflection. Jim, what do you think it is that you don't like or, or you hate about it? Because, um, I mean, yeah, I find the opening really lovely. I just a bit, bit nondescript in the dry down, that's all for me. But I, I certainly would never say hate. I could I totally, I could totally wear it and enjoy it, but I'd feel a bit like I needed to add something on top once it got to the dry down. Um, <laughs> okay, right then. Um, what else we've? Shall I just ra randomly go through what we've got here? So I've got Monte Cristo. Uh, Monte Cristo is uh, notes of ca cabruva? cabruva, I don't know what that is, ambrette seeds, rum, tobacco leaves, celery seeds, cistus, benzoin, golden stone, styrax gum, guyac wood, cedarwood, patchouli. So I already knew from the note listing this is not going to be for me. Um, Jim says, I get a weird reaction with some aroma chemicals. This must have one in it that I have a reaction to. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, Jim. There is some there is something in there that reminds me a little bit of ISO E Super Raw or Timber Silk. How do you feel about those ingredients? Uh, John says, I like Monte Cristo. It's quite naughty. I don't know. Um, to me, it's it's almost like another tea fragrance, but in a different way. It's not as smoky as the other one, um, Russian tea. It's this Seb, Seb Bruva. I really don't know what that is. And Brett Seeds and Rum. It does have that feel of um, like a, a, an older gentleman's smoking room with old furniture like old mahogany furniture leather seats maybe an ashtray with a, a 
a cigar that's not smoking it's been put out it's papery yeah it's papery um a little bit of smoke actually and maybe not a cigar um like um a clean smoke from a fire a normal smoke from a fire yeah it's not my thing but i don't dislike it at all So that's Monte Cristo. What else have we got over here? Dun Hemingway, Monte Cristo, Love Kills. Oh, we've got Kintsugi and Mandala. So we'll do Kintsugi. Oh, spray it in here, Kintsugi. And this is Bergamot, Magnolia, Savory Amber, Golden Suede, Centrifolia Rose, Grass, absolute, so Centrifolia, so Grass Rose, uh, Violet Leaves, Benzoin, raspberry leaves, patchouli, heart and vanilla, absolute. So from those notes, I was really thinking I was going to love this one. I'm not sure why I don't. Um, I think the magnolia, so magnolia is kind of like a, a very creamy, clean floral, isn't it? Um, I need to try this properly on skin because all of these notes really do kind of say my name yeah so I need to give Kintsugi more of a go so I kind of dismissed it but actually with those notes I need to retry it um, it might be the sort of like the greenery from the violet leaves as well that I'm not necessarily loving um, Gail says, La Tessa for bed tonight, loving the new hairstyle, Claire. Thank you, Gail. Oh, good choice. Oh, I love La Tessa. Oh, so good. Um, uh, Master Milana says, Cabruva is a heavy wood used in architecture. It does get a thick oil. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, Kintsugi is a very clean um, magnolia, quite a strong magnolia i think in here it's um quite noticeable very clean and smooth with a hint of something kind of smoky but maybe more resiny um and it says savory amber and i totally get something savory i wouldn't have necessarily called it a savory amber but i do get a contrast here so it's you've got this clean smooth creamy floral and you do have something savory here it's really nice actually is it is it something i'd really, i think the reason i don't love it is because it's not that sweet but i haven't picked up on the vanilla yet so maybe when the vanilla starts to play i'll probably feel a bit more warm towards it but it is really it's definitely interesting if you like magnolia you need to try it so that's kintsugi and we've got mandala um john says kintsugi i should have loved but i didn't vibe with it for some reason right let's do mandala here we go and we have frankincense nutmeg angelica cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, cistus, cedar, incense, myrrh, sandalwood, oak moss, a tincture of natural ambergris. This is kind of leathery, leathery and musky. Um, it does, I think that ambergris is giving it that kind of like leathery, musky, slightly animalic feel. It does have that kind of salty element to it as well. Amanda says, Mandala is so powerful. Joe says, this one has my name all over it. Yeah, this, this is really interesting. It's probably a bit too dirty for me. It doesn't smell really dirty, but yeah, it does feel... Um, 
salty and leathery and musky and you've got all these spices but it doesn't feel mega spicy which I'm surprised at. It's almost more herbal than it is spicy. And mandala is incensey, I think, says Alicia. Yes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now you say it, it's, it's definitely really incensey. Carti says, Kintsugi seems quite popular. I'm curious to try it. And mandala. Well, all of them. <laughs> um, John says, mandala is damn, damn nice. Um, Joe says, yes, give me all the dirt. Karine says, I've not tried anything from the brand yet. They all sound pretty unique. I like that, yeah. Um, airy incense, says John. And the base, like burning resins. Yeah, it's a really interesting fragrance. It's, it's not for me, but it's very interesting. It's just, it doesn't really have any sweetness to it, which is probably why it's not for me. It's not really dirty, but it does, you can tell the ambergris is lending it that slightly um what's the word i don't know what the word is not human because obviously it's not human it comes out of wales um but it does lend it a more um i don't know real like not a perfume like something that's come from nature and and it's not a flower or anything like that it has that kind of like this is real life and death <laughs> what am I talking about um so that's that is really interesting what else have we got I think we might have done oh no we've got one more here oh we got oh we got tango over here Oof, hang on Oof, can't reach it I've got tango right over here we should talk about tango and I've got romanza over there as well we should talk about tango because this is one that is very well loved and it's by Cecile Zarokian and it's a very well loved beautiful ambery perfume so tango if anyone has that if anyone has experience of it speak up or forever hold if they'll knows <laughs> um tango has bergamot black pepper cardamom jasmine sandback absolute damascena rose cumin and patchouli vanilla bean Meli meliot meliot absolute i don't know what that is if mask milano is still here Please feel free to let me know what that is. M-E-L-I-L-O-T. Amber Accord, Leather Accord, Benzoin and Musks. Yeah, this is a really beautiful ambery vanilla resin. There is, again, there's something slightly, almost like, it's, I don't know if there's ambergris. There's no ambergris listed, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was some in here because it has something like that. It's kind of like salty feel. Uh, Scott says, I looked everywhere for my sample of Tango. Cannot find it. I did love from what I recall. I remember thinking this smelled a bit tonkery. I don't feel like that today. I don't think we have tonker in here. Um, no, it's, it's almost like got a slightly orangey effect to it. Uh, Mask Milano says, Mandala is as powerful as running at uh, 15,000 feet and then breathing deeply the fresh mountain air it will get to your brain. <laughs> uh, John, uh, Jimbo says, Romanza is an amazing fragrance. I got a sample because it is by Cristiano Canali who created B. Okay, I will reach over and grab that in a second. And John says, Romanza was a surprise, Jim. I loved it. And Amanda says, love tango. <laughs> It is a beautiful, rich, ambery hug of a fragrance. It's really lovely. Again, one I probably wouldn't wear in the warmer weather. Although you could wear it in the evening. It's, yeah, it's lovely. It's got a resiny feel to it. But it does definitely have something, a tiny bit animalic about it. Really nice. So uh, I'm going to reach over and grab, if you'll bear with me a second, Romanza, and then that will be it, because I'm tired. There we are. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Here we go, right. Romanza. 
and notes are so it's a, it says the appearance dandy's touch oh i know what this one is i remember this one absinthe orange blossom and angelica the soul hedonist bouquet narcissus violet leaves and jasmine the ineluctable time revenge decadent woods vetiver cedarwood patchouli amber accord and myrrh so i think i know what this one is yep that's the one so i did nearly this nearly made the cut this nearly made the box um and but that was before i knew that lost alice was available so lost alice pipped this one out this is the weirdest of all of them in my opinion and I do get some things like the Uranus from it and I think there's a, isn't there a Hawthorne Accord or Acacia can't see it I thought there was but I could be wrong um but it does do something that Hawthorne and and or Acacia can do in terms of kind of like green yet it's almost like if you had a bush and an animal had weed up the bush and it's the smell of the bush but also the wee and I know that sounds horrible and I'm really sorry Mask Milano that that was offensive to you I do apologize I have to be honest and I like to give people descriptions they might be able to relate to um this is a really unusual yet beautiful and interesting fragrance and as I say it, it I nearly put it in the box but we had to have lost Alice because that's a brand new one that everyone wants to try it including me I wanted to try it so this didn't quite make it um all right let's have a look and see so I think Master Milano have answered the question about that note um if I can find the answer Tim says tango also lasts and lasts it's still there 24 hours later on my arm after a shower when I get up that's pretty amazing uh, John says, Romanza is Narcissus heaven, dry and fresh to me. Okay, Mas Milano did not know Melitus until Cecile introduced it to me. Okay. Um, definitely not a mass market type of fragrance. No. Uh, Tim's real Hawthorne sniffed in the world is quite rank. And John says, I quite like that vibe about it. Um, yeah, I think it might be the Narcissus then, because Narcissus is uh, is kind of um, green and yellow at the same time. And it's very smooth and it's musky, like a floral musky fragrance. I would be slightly nervous to wear this, if I'm honest. I appreciate it. I think it's really unusual, but in a beautiful way. But... I do feel like it errs on that kind of someone around here wet their knickers, you know, kind of thing. Um, it does. It really does. Um, so <laughs> um, I find it very unusual and um, I don't think I can quite describe it. I can't do it justice because I can't stop concentrating on on, on the Uranus quality of it. But I do get it. It's definitely got this like musky, musky, almost musty kind of feel to it. I would say this is probably going to be the one of the more challenging of, of all of them, really. Uh, but I can't stop sniff sniffing it. So it's really unusual. So that's Romanza. Dorian Gray is the Victorian Narcissus. John says it can go quite indolic too. It's probably why it's, it's kind of like, um, it is a challenge to wear it, I think. <laughs> Not pee. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I like to um, be down to earth. <laughs> and um, yeah, say what I smell. But really really interesting and really beautiful and obviously has its fans john loves it um uh not offensive at all it is a narcissus that is green bush and animalic okay thank you <laughs> um okay so i think that is it i think we're done um 
If you have any final thoughts on Mask Milano's, uh, let me know. Let me know now what your absolute favourite is. For me, it is La Tessa for sure. Uh, Jimbo says, thank you so much, Claire, for doing this. Thank you, Perfume Playground and Mask Milano. Have a great eat. Have it greatly enjoyed this and we'll be purchasing a few travel sprays in the near future. Well, thank you for joining in, Jimbo. John saying thank you. Uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Love doing this. Yeah, let me know if you've enjoyed this. Would you like to see more of these kind of things? And um, enjoy. Enjoy your samples. Take your time now. You um, spray them, give them time. Because as I say, Latessa, when I first tried it a couple of years ago, it wasn't a love straight away. So and now it's like full on love. So take your time. Enjoy. Thank you all so much for joining in. Um, got so many comments now, I can't keep up. A lot of people saying thank you. Um, Perfume Playground saying thank you so much everyone who joined in. A huge thank you to the amazing Claire. Thanks, amazing. Oh, I'll take that. <laughs> um, and Jimbo says, Lost Alice and Times Square are my favourites so far. Times Square is the one I haven't tried that I was curious about because I think it's got a lipstick note, hasn't it? But I haven't tried that one. Um, so that's it then. I will say a final cheers to you all. Hope you have enjoyed the best, the best. Brain fog, brain fog. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evenings, whatever you're doing or day, because you over the pond, it's still got a bit more day left. Cheers, and I'll see you all very soon. Mwah.